Okay, welcome back, and now we're going to move into uh, continuing to explore technical specification um, security policies and specifically access control lists. So really the best way to uh, think about this is you're going to just think in your mind of a table and you're going to list the users down the left you know, column uh, within that table and then you're going to put their rights uh, out in the uh, subsequent column. So it's going to be a table that governs, links uh, user uh, uh, users to their rights and privileges uh, within a particular system or within a particular uh, program. So uh, this uh, access uh, control list is the mechanism by which you do that. Uh, a lot of times it's going to be very complex because you uh, may have a matrix, a uh, multi-dimensional matrix, as opposed to some simple list of tables that are associated with it, but really it's all about what can specific users do? What are they authorized to do uh, within a particular uh, system? Let's look now at uh, continuing to explore this a little bit more and uh, look at why you would uh, potentially use this. So uh, access control lists are going to regulate who uh, can use that system, what are the authorized users, who, who are the authorized users, what can the authorized users uh, access, and when they can access this. So if you uh, think back, uh, there are certain products out there that will govern uh, the use of your internet browser so that your children cannot get on it at 3 o'clock in the morning. It actually blocks that. That's an access control list. Uh, your user login and password uh, to a particular system often is controlled within an access control list. So it's, it's just a mechanism of uh, uh, enabling administrators to restrict access to systems according to either the user or computer or the time, or the duration uh, of access, or even a, a particular file. So it's just one of those fundamental principles associated with uh, protecting it. It's technically how you do it uh, within that particular system. So a very important topic uh, within security, access control lists, and typically you will find those in technical specification um, or technical system uh, 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 security uh, policies. All right, uh, uh, this is a little bit more on that particular topic and again it's, it's kind of what I've talked about but it, it gives you some greater uh, scope uh, in terms of what things you can do. Imagine that you're a professor and you're given a class and you want to uh, uh, limit the collaboration that the students are going to have while they're taking a particular uh, evaluation. So say they're taking quiz one and you want them to have access to the World Wide Web but not have access to chat, you're going to use an access control list uh, at, at a fundamental level to control that so that certain programs can work and other programs cannot work. As you're setting these things up, uh, typically what you're going to do is use uh, different permissions such as read Write. Read means you can only read the information, but you can't change it. Write means you can read it and write it. Create it means not only can you read and write to existing objects, you can create new objects. Modify is a combination of that read-write. You can delete, compare, or copy. So these are all different types of user privileges that you might want to control depending on what technology you're examining. and. Uh, Again, it, it's one of these kind of fundamental principles associated with how you do things. Well, let me show you an example of uh, one of these now. So in this particular case, we've gone into the uh, computer management, and uh, you can come in and see where we're, uh, we've got groups, and then we've got rights associated with those specific groups. And in this particular case, administrators can do certain things, backup operators have permissions to do certain other things, guests network configurators, uh, a configuration group, a power users. All of these have different uh, uh, permissions associated with them. And if you go into your, your Windows operating system, it's easy to pull this up and to look at this and see what permissions have been set up there. But again, the underlying technology is going to be those access control lists. All right, well, we've talked enough about access control lists. Let's shift our focus now and talk about that second mechanism for technical control, and that was a configuration rules. So configuration rules are going to be very similar, um, but they're specific uh, 
codes and rules that are very specific to a particular system. So whereas access control lists are actually a little bit more broad, uh, configuration rules go into very specific systems using very specific codes to control that. Um, a lot of security systems are going to use these scripts uh, to talk back and forth and to perform uh, certain operations. If you'll recall, we talked about principles of um, least privilege and due process. A lot of uh, configuration rules are going to help you implement those types of things. Here, let's look at an example now of one of these uh, configuration rules. And in this particular case, um, you're, you're talking about specific packets being allowed in and out and which packets will be written to specific uh, log files out there. Um, this gives, a, again, an example of a configuration rule that you can configure. And if you're a little bit hazy on, well, what's the difference between a configuration rule and an access control rule uh, or access control list, uh, don't be. They're, they're, they're uh, a little bit of technical uh, jargon there. It's not uh, that testable. I'm not going to get in and say, hey, time to build a access control list or a configuration rule, but you should know they exist. And the technical members of your staff should uh, serve as your kind of uh, experts in providing, well, what do these rules look like? You may have to help them in translating uh, that into English. Uh, so that the other users uh, can understand it, but uh, uh, there should be a, another member of your staff that technically is working those issues for you and identifying and maintaining these rules, but you should know they exist. You should be able to point to those topics as you're uh, going forward within a uh, particular uh, uh, system and doing the uh, configuration on that specific system. Uh, finally, let's look at uh, the uh, kind of overarching uh, guidance. We'll do maybe two slides on this. Uh, be careful as you integrate different things together to make sure that the managerial guidance and the technical guidance uh, are linked. And uh, if you do it within a single document, you've got two different groups of users that are going to be reading that. And it can get confusing. So just be aware of that. Some folks are going to want to link it into a single document. Sometimes you want to keep it separate. Uh, because the managerial guidance uh, is not going to get into the geeky details. The technical specifications are, and it just may be mind-numbing to uh, read through all of that and try to understand all of that. Uh, let's look at one last example, and in this particular case, I think we're looking at uh, configuration rules, and this is a particular uh, uh, segment of a, a document where we're uh, defining security levels and how they're modified, and then we're going down. But this is, uh, if you look at this, this is uh, the level, uh, how specific you have to get within the code. You, you really need to be reading a programming language to be able to go in and set up configuration rules. And you can put some English around it, and you, if you're a smart person, you can figure it out. But this is not something, configuration rules and access control lists are not something that the uh, normal user is going to access, and if they do, access control lists are going to be a little bit more understandable than uh, the configuration rules, which are very, very specific. Okay, this particular video has looked at access control lists and looked at configuration rules and talked about how they relate to uh, technical specifications within a, a system-specific security policy. What we're going to do now is step back out, get a little bit more uh, global, and uh, talk about guidelines for effective policy in our next video. So until then, keep studying, keep working hard at this course, and I'll see you in the next video.